Right now at 6, the police chief of DeForest is accused of making racist remarks on an online video. Tonight, community leaders meet to discuss his future in the village. There is a national night out effort tonight to better connect police officers with the communities they serve. What local officers hope to accomplish during their national night out. And for the first time in years, Janesville is looking at the process of reassessing homes and businesses. What you need to know about the potential double digit increase. This is News 3 at 6. Thanks for joining us tonight. A committee in DeForest is deciding the fate of its chief of police tonight. DeForest Chief Dan Furseth is accused of making racist comments on video. Our Killy Arthur is live at Village Hall to share what she knows ahead of tonight's meeting. Keely? Well, first it's offered to resign in June, but then rescinded that offer tonight. The village board here in DeForest is meeting to discuss how to proceed next that could include terminating Forsyth down the road. Now, back in May of this year, a video posted on YouTube back in 2015 surfaced. It shows Forsyth mocking a group of black men. Forsyth was put on paid administrative leave and offered a severance package, which he declined. Now, tonight, the village board will decide if they should recommend his case be reviewed by the police commission. If it is, the commission could decide to fire the chief. Now, I spoke with Gregory Jones, the head of Dane County's NAACP, as he arrived here tonight and asked him what he thought of the video. Racist, discriminatory, and derogatory behavior and attitudes. And to have that, have those kinds of qualities in a leader in a criminal justice position so fundamental to the dispensation of justice is, is, is a problem. Now, I asked Jones point blank, should Forseth be terminated? He said with the incarceration rate of black men disproportionately high, that that bias has no place being in the chief, uh, the police department, rather. And tonight on News 3 at 10, we're going to bring you the latest. There's going to be some public comment and then a closed session. We hope to have the decision on our broadcast. Back to you. We will see you tonight at 10. Keely Arthur reporting live. Thanks, Keely. Turning to weather now, a rainy night is in store for us. Here is Chief Meteorologist Gary Knolte with your first alert forecast. Hi, Gary. Hi, Charlotte. Well, there'll be a few scattered showers. Most of those will be just this evening, but after that, we'll be dealing with some areas of fog. Let's start out by taking a look at visible cloud track. You see we've had clouds for much of the day today, but as we check out uh, Doppler track, you can see the rain showers from earlier have moved off to the east. The showers and isolated thunderstorms coming in from the west are diminishing, and I think by about 9 or 10 o'clock, tonight. Most of those should pretty much be out of the way. Low temperatures this morning started out right around 60 degrees, some 50s up to the north, middle 60s to the south. For the, uh, the current temperatures are in the middle, lower to middle 70s. A few places are in the upper 60s where there's a little more sunshine. Temperatures are a couple degrees warmer. As we check out dew points, though, they're still in the mid 60s to around 70. So even if it doesn't rain, you'll still see pretty humid conditions. Look for temperatures to drop to the lower 60s by early tomorrow morning in some areas of fog overnight. Then tomorrow will turn partly sunny and that will warm us right back up to around 83. That's your first alert forecast. Thank you, Gary. A Wisconsin couple is in Slovenia tonight searching for their son who went missing in June. 25 year old Jonathan Luskin was visiting the European country with family when he decided to extend his part of the trip. He was last seen at a hostel in Slovenia on June 22nd. That same day, Luskin told a friend he planned to hike a national park in northeast Slovenia. Jonathan's parents are now in the country working with the U.S. Embassy to find him. His mother tells News 3 they appreciate everything being done to find him. He was working as a teacher in Hong Kong before he disappeared. A decision has been made in the controversy over the name of the Porter Butts Art Gallery at UW-Madison. The gallery was named after a man who belonged to a 1920s student group called the Ku Klux Klan. That's reportedly not to be confused with the real Knights of the KKK. It was just, quote, unfortunately named. After a pushback between students and the family, they've come to a positive agreement to rename the Porter Butts Gallery to the main gallery. Porter will be honored through a kiosk somewhere else in the building where there is less student traffic. We spoke with Porter's daughter today who says she understands where students may still feel concern, but is happy they have come to an agreement. It got conflated and in the minds of some people that name is still there, the KKK's name there, in spite of all the facts that we can say otherwise in regard to my father. 
um, let's do, let's just change it now. Let's just change it. Let's, it'll benefit them and it'll benefit Porter. It'll benefit our family and the Union Council and everyone. Porter's new tribute kiosk will have a full background of what contributions he made on campus, in addition to the work his social group did to benefit the student community. We are one week away now from Wisconsin's primary election. You'll have the chance to vote for the next United States Senator. Rose Schmidt is here to introduce us to the Republicans vying for the seat. That's right. Now, Kevin Nicholson and Leah Vukmir have very different backgrounds, but they agree on most of the issues. And they agree they want to beat U.S. Senator Tammy Baldwin in November. But but each one believes they're the best person to do that. Republican Leah Vukmir is a mom with a cause. When my daughter was five, I asked a fateful question in her kindergarten classroom, and it started me on an odyssey of going to school board meetings, writing letters to the editor. That journey led Vukmir to testify at the Capitol in Madison, where she then spent years as a state representative and now state senator. That's why I say I've always been someone who got into politics out of circumstance, not ambition. Vukmir is now trying to go from the state's capital to the nation's in Washington. But standing in her way, first, is her primary opponent, Kevin Nicholson. Well, I'm an outsider, and there's no doubt about that. I'm in the private sector now. I'm a Marine Corps veteran. I'm a husband, the father of three. Nicholson is pretty open about his journey. He started out as a Democrat, once serving as the head of the National College Democrats. But it's so much the story of our state. We have so many people in our state that were once Democrats and today conservatives and vote for Republicans because they realize the Democrat Party doesn't provide any solutions. That seems to be something both Nicholson and Vukmir can agree on. They each believe they would be better suited to take on Democratic U.S. Senator Tammy Baldwin in November. I'm the proven, consistent conservative. I haven't just talked about being a conservative. I can actually show you based on my record. Vukmir is backed by the state's Republican Party, and Nicholson has been getting strong support from groups like Wisconsin Club for Growth. Look, I, I, I talk to you around the state all the time, and I know that you're frustrated that you sent so many people to Washington that never saw the problems, that never really come through. I am going to come through. Democrat Tammy Baldwin has been a U.S. Senator since 2013. She was the first openly gay person elected to the U.S. House. She's from Madison and previously served in the State Assembly. Now, tomorrow on News 3, we'll tell you about some of the issues where those Republican candidates differ, including the legalization of marijuana. All right, Rose, thank you. Thank you, Rose. A state study committee is looking today at how property values are assessed around the state. The city of Janesville is in the middle of that process for the first time in years. City officials say that could lead to a drastic change in how much commercial and residential properties are worth. Residents will be notified around this time next year regarding assessment changes to their properties. The city assessor says this reevaluation is actually a good thing. A more lucrative real estate market is a good indicator for the local economy. Contrary to popular belief, um, they are revenue neutral. If the whole community goes up 20 percent, then the mill rate will come down. So we're just trying to re-account for where those market values are now, so it'll readjust things. The assessor says a seller's real estate market has drastically increased prices for residential properties in the past two years, and right now she's predicting around a 20% increase. The last time the city completed a revaluation was 2011. First responders from across the country are getting a chance to get personal with members of their community. The connection they hope to make here in Wisconsin during the National Night Out event. That's coming up next at 6.
Beloit police hope a new piece of evidence will bring them closer to finding a man wanted for shooting two people. Police say they found a vehicle that they believe belongs to the suspect, D'Angelo Thomas. Thomas is 20 years old. He's accused of shooting two people, a 41-year-old man and a 15-year-old boy in Beloit last Wednesday. Police have been looking for him since that shooting and say they have reason to believe he could be in a different county or state. The neighborhood where that shooting happened is one of many that will be host to national night out events. Rock County reporter Adam Duxter joins us live from our bureau at the Janesville Gazette with why tonight is important to the community in Beloit. Adam? Well, National Night Out's all about the first responders, police, EMS, and fire getting out and about into their community. For the city of Beloit, it couldn't be coming at a better time. In our community, we see that there is a need for providing that extra support that we are a safe place for um, anybody to come to. Our Savior Lutheran Church is just blocks away from where a double shooting took place last week in Beloit. Tonight, they'll be one of the sites of Beloit's National Night Out. As generations have progressed, unfortunately, some neighbors don't even know who's living right beside them. And this helps encourage people to get in contact with each other. For police, the emphasis is on community, giving neighbors an opportunity to meet first responders and also one another. The issue with driving around in a car is great. It gets you from one location to another, but it has that downside where you can't interact very well with the, the community. That interaction is key, especially following a violent event like last week's shooting, which makes it even more important to community members like Smith. Uh, growing up here, it's kind of been, it's, it's, it's home. It's my home away from home. And I'm blessed enough now to have my own children actually growing up in the church as well and see the, it's, it's really a big extended family. And tonight at Our Savior Church, they've got a special surprise, a kiss from a pig. Now, who's going to be kissing the pig? Well, that's in question. It's been a competition raising money and donations. It's either going to be the Beloit Fire Chief, a mystery police officer, or the pastor at the church. So, so definitely something you're going to want to stay tuned and find out who is going to be kissing that pig down in Beloit as part of the National Night Out. Oh, it sounds like a fun time. All right, Adam, thank you very much. This year's National Night Out in Madison comes days after a shooting at WORT radio station. In the past week alone, there have also been multiple weapons and theft calls reported around the city. On the north side over the weekend, a 14-year-old reportedly flashed a gun at a Madison Mallards employee while trespassing in the duck pond. Warner Park is hosting Madison's National Night Out event. It runs until 8 o'clock tonight, so people living around can stop by, check out some of the firefighters and police officers' specialized equipment, and bring up any concerns they might have with neighborhood officers. Still to come tonight at 6, Milwaukee's Oktoberfest has a new home. And there's a new flight option for people traveling out of Dane County Regional Airport, where you can head in the southwest next at 6. Coming up in weather, clouds will continue for tonight. There might be a shower or a thunderstorm, some patchy fog, but sunshine tomorrow will warm us up. I'll have your first alert forecast in a few minutes. My
You'll soon be able to take a direct non-stop flight from Madison to Phoenix. Frontier Airlines is adding the new service on November 17th. There will be two weekly flights to Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport. Flights will depart out of Madison on Wednesdays and Saturdays, and tickets for those flights are on sale now. A construction project on a county highway in Cross Plains is ahead of schedule. The project was on Highway P and involves replacing all of the utilities underneath the road, along with updating sewer and water mains and adding curbs and gutters. Project engineers say a lot of things contribute to a project being on time. The residents have been very patient and very cooperative in allowing this work to proceed at such a quick pace. At one point we had four construction crews working at one time in a very small spot, so it was a little hectic at the start. He says the project is still an active work site and the detour is still in effect, but the goal is to have things wrapped up by Labor Day. Milwaukee's Oktoberfest will be the first event on the plaza adjacent to the Bucks' new arena. The festival will take place at Pfizer Forum October 5th through the 7th. It's in its ninth year and free to attend. The festival features things like a stein hoisting competition, brat eating contest, and live polka music, among other German themed activities. Talking about Oktoberfest already. Oh, well, it is ready. August, so. Yeah, it feels more like uh, late July yeah, and early it's still August very because humid it's, outside. it's humid and the temperature is going to come right back mm -hmm. up now that we're getting some sunshine back in the forecast. Let's start out by taking a look at visible cloud track. You can see we've had clouds for most of the day here in southern Wisconsin, and that has been the big factor why we've had temperatures in the 70s. Now, there has been a little more sunshine up in the northern part of the state and also some sunshine to our south and west. And notice these clouds uh, starting to move eastward. A few thunderstorms have popped up in the warmer and more humid air out to the west, but those showers and storms are moving into an area where the uh, atmosphere has been pretty humid and cloudy, and uh, it's going to weaken the, uh, the storms a little bit. Now, over the last 48 hours, Two to four inches of rain, mostly uh, later yesterday, uh, fell over parts of uh, Iowa and southwestern Wisconsin, lesser amounts up to the north. Now today, things have been pretty quiet around here. We've had just a little bit of light rain moving through, but not far to our south. A band of heavier showers and thunderstorms uh, moved right through the central part of the Chicago area, and flash flood warnings are in effect there uh, for about one to three inches of rain. But you can see that rain is moving out. What's coming in from the west is weakening again as it moves into that area where we've had cloud cover for much of the day. So so that's kind of stabilized the atmosphere. These showers and storms will probably fall apart pretty quickly after sunset. Live view from the Queen Bee Radio Sky Cam and Platteville. A little more ominous there. We've had some uh, a little sunshine earlier today. The WISC Sky Cam shows the sunshine pretty much gone now. And the Edge or the uh, the Edgewater Sky Cam in downtown Madison showing mostly cloudy skies downtown. As we check out the almanac for today, high temperature only made it up to 73, so that's 7 degrees below normal. Low temperature right at 60 degrees, and right now we're at 73. The skies are mostly cloudy. Winds are out of the northeast at 5 miles per hour. Dew point temperature is still up at 65, so it is pretty humid out there. Temperatures mainly in the upper 60s to low 70s, but the jet stream is coming in from the southwest. And notice how it kind of dips out to the west of us. That's starting to bring in slightly drier air through the Dakotas, and that will start to clear out the clouds for tomorrow, allowing temperatures to warm back up. Uh, south of this front, temperatures are a little bit warmer, uh, but the cloud cover is still doing its thing on, on those uh, areas, keeping temperatures a little cooler. Farther out to the west, though, where the sun is shining, temperatures are in the 80s, and that's what we're looking for for tomorrow. And notice the dew point temperatures. They don't really change very much to the Midwest, so the humidity levels will still stay fairly high, at least for the time being. 62 for the overnight low temperature, a chance for a shower or thunderstorm mainly this evening, then some patchy fog late. Then for tomorrow, look for a partly sunny and warm day with our high temperature right back up at 83. On future track, watch how quickly those showers and storms die out this evening. Look for areas of fog and clouds overnight with low temperatures in the lower 60s. Tomorrow, high temperatures topping out in the lower 80s with partly sunny skies. Tomorrow night, partly cloudy, temperatures staying in the mid 60s. And then on Thursday, partly sunny and very warm. Notice high temperatures mid 80s with some shower and thunderstorm chances popping up late in the day. 7 to 10 day forecast, those temperatures stay in the 80s through the weekend. And in fact, if anything, go up a little bit toward the end of next week. High temperatures in the upper 80s by Thursday and Friday of next week. Well, hey, get a good look at this. That's the Wisconsin offensive line gracing the cover of Sports Illustrated this week. They're cover models now, basically. Where do the experts have the Badgers ranked? We'll show you next in sports. News 3.
Well, starting on Media Day one week ago, head coach Paul Christ squashed any narrative about Wisconsin being a top whatever team or in contention for a college football playoff spot because he said the only opinions that matter are those of the people inside their locker room. Well, get a look at one of four Sports Illustrated magazine covers ahead of the college football season. This one featuring the Badgers offensive line of David Edwards wearing number 79. They're my favorite model face, by the way. <laughs> Tyler Biotish, John Dietzen, Michael Dieter, and Bo Benchel rounding out the front five there with a caption, Big is Beautiful. SI ranking the Badgers number three in the country be behind Clemson and Alabama in its preseason poll. Among the notable players that they mentioned in their article, their running back Jonathan Taylor, who is an early favorite for the Heisman and will build on what was already a successful freshman year where he ran for more than 1,900 yards. Running backs coach John Settle says JT has spent a lot of time in the weight room in the offseason and setting other top backs in the country. And the ceiling for him, well, the limit does not exist. I've always said uh, with a, a young man like Jonathan who's uh, serious-minded, who uh, is focused, sky's the limit. I, I, I honestly believe it, you know, uh, uh, barring injury, uh, he, he, he's going to be able to accomplish everything he sets out to accomplish. Every goal that he sets, he's going to be able to uh, accomplish that. Well, we probably won't be seeing a lot of, if any, of Aaron Rodgers of the Packers' first preseason game on Thursday. Green Bay hosting the Tennessee Titans that night, but we will see a battle under center for QB2, for the QB2 spot between Brett Hundley and new guy Deshaun Kaiser, who played for the Browns last season. Now, Hundley spent most of last year at QB1 after Rodgers got hurt at Minnesota early in the season. So after some experience under his belt, he is ready to get out there and earn a spot. It's just good to go go get somebody else, you know. <laughs> uh, we like like you sort of put it. We've been practicing against each other, and uh, it's all it's all fun, you know. Every time we're in between those white lines, but now when you get to get live, you know, um, even for quarterbacks, uh, I'm not saying I'm looking forward to getting hit. I would love to walk away from the game not being touched, um, but at the same time, you know, just to get that rust off. Well, the crew filling the 40th and final roster spot with the addition of right-hander Ariel Hernandez. The Brewers claiming him off of waivers from the Dodgers. The 25-year-old is assigned to AAA for right now. He had 29 strikeouts and 24.1 innings for the Reds this season. Brewers and Padres tonight. Chase Anderson on the mound for Milwaukee. San Diego countering with Clayton Richard. First pitch at 7:10. And finally tonight, it is a done deal. Sam Decker officially a Cleveland Cavalier. In exchange, both teams will get draft rights to one international player each, and the Cavs will also get some cash from the Clippers. Now, the former Badger forward is expected to get more minutes in Cleveland than he did in L.A. He averaged 12.1 minutes of playing time off the bench last season, about 4.2 points, 2.4 rebounds per game. The Sheboygan native will make $2.76 million this season and will be a restricted free agent next summer. Now, he's going to his fourth season now, third team, busy mm -hmm. time for him. Good to see him doing well. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Gary's here with the final check. Well, looks like temperatures are going to stay in the 80s at least beginning tomorrow, probably through the end of next week, too. So a little warmer, a little more humid. All right. Thank you, Gary. Thank you for joining us. Have a great evening, and we'll see you back here at 10 o'clock.